Ladies and gentlemen to the Charlotte Major, it's time to get into the tail end of our matches for the day, as we have our first one coming up right now between Furia and Exet. It's Furia's doubleheader, of course, and we'll be going up against Exet, who struggled earlier on today, but now have actually, in my opinion, a pretty good chance for redemption, given the stakes on this match. As usual, Stokes is going to be casting with me. Stokes, let's get your own opening thoughts on this matchup. You know, I think it's going to be a bare-knuckle brawl in between these two. Furia has always been a team where we've seen them use that mechanical ability to try and really take it to the opposition, but a lot of times that usually ends up in something like an overextension or something inside of that vein. But for Exet, they actually got punished earlier today as well. So for Furia, it's going to be a nice start to their day pretty late here into the evening. But for Exet, they're ready to get this second game done with and see if they get some points on the board. Absolutely the case here. If they can go 1-1 one, one for the day, that won't be too bad for them. Obviously, a little bit of a disappointment earlier on going up against CAG, but that was kind of the worry talking to some of the other talent here uh, about how Exit may perform is that once again going up against another squad that plays like them but can also kind of play into that more standard style of Siege. Maybe they were going to run into issues there and clearly it seems like it was the case. Unfortunately, we were also casting another game while that one was going on uh, as we weren't able to gather the greatest amount of intel. But I think here against Furia, they're actually going to be centered a little bit more. Some people may disagree with me on that considering that it's a Latin American team. They tend to play a bit more aggressively. Uh, but looking at Furia's more recent games, they play a fairly reserved style of Siege from what I've been able to find out there. Um, looking, you know, it's still Latin America. Of course, yeah. you still have the occasional jump out or crazy play from time to time, but for the most part, playing a much more traditional game, almost like in the old meta style to a certain extent. So I think that that actually aligns pretty well with the way Exit plays and could allow them to take a pretty serious advantage in this matchup. Yeah, I have to completely agree with you. I think this is going to have Exit in a very grounded position. So, and speaking of Exit, come up on your guys' screen here and start talking about them. We've had a fantastic time in the NAL casting these guys. The first start to the week wasn't exactly great. Uh, the, you know, they ended up faltering just a little bit, lost their first two matches, but as soon as Spirits got a hold of those reins, my God, did they take off. <laughs> Absolutely the case here, and they really rocketed their way through the rest of that NAL season. Like you said, some doubts earlier on, but they had thrown all of those away by the end, and at least in my book, were one of the top teams, if not the top, coming into this event here with the play style they're able to bring to the table. Especially again, when you look at the coach and the amount of experience that he has coming from the Latin American region, and the players that he seemingly brought along with him too. This is a very dangerous run roster and one that teams from other regions, Furious specifically, and certainly going to be the case that they need to respect coming into this matchup. Absolutely. And you know, especially with Xset kind of being a fusion of NA as well as LATAM coming in to make this, you know, whatever you want to call Xset. It's a culmination <laughs> of a lot of different things. I mean, these are some amazing players, especially with, you know, the story of Kino and Yaga and the way that they've reached the position that they are. You know, they're more than likely very, very excited to try and attempt to get this win under their belt their very first one on international competition. So we're going to get to the map bands here, folks, and see exactly where we will be headed to. Let's see exactly what battleground we will be selecting. Looking into it now, we'll have our first bands going out of the way. Villa knocked out first by Fury. That's actually quite surprising considering the uh, relative pl amount of play we see on that inside of the Latin American region. They also knock out Shala and Oregon. And meanwhile, Exit has taken out Theme Park, Border, Cafe, and Skyscraper, which leaves us we're just lonely old clubhouse as our last remaining map. That'll be the battleground for this series, ladies and gentlemen. Just a best of one, as it will be the case throughout all of our groups here. So pretty much the Siege map right now, the kind of standard style of play that you'll be forced into because of the way this map lines up. It's a true testing ground, I think, for a lot of teams alongside maps like Oregon as well, where these maps have, for the most part, really been played out. Like, they've they've been explored, like, 90 to 95% of their potential, I yeah. would say. Even more than that, I'd say. I'd say, I'd say you've practically reached 100% potential yeah. with the things that you have access to in the current moment. I think the big game changer for a lot of these maps is going to be coming the next patch with a zombie coming into competitive play, where you're actually able to form your own defensive standpoints with your own walls so it'll be pretty interesting once we cross that bridge but obviously that is quite a bit a ways away but back to the subject that you're talking about between the two maps i feel like clubhouse has quite a few more avenues of attack for all of the sites in comparison to oregon oregon's very straightforward you're really not going to do something that's going to be unorthodox or out of the ordinary because as you said it's played out everyone knows the perfect way yeah. to attack that map but for clubhouse you're still going to have some wiggle room i mean even on cctv for instance you can go right for the the main wall you can go into construction there's so many different options and fortunately enough for us we don't have to wait too much longer to figure out what exit wants to do with their defensive uh, decisions i'm gonna get into the attacker bands here as exit will remove habana pretty straightforward one here for clubhouse all right so looking at the second ban as well here 
Gonna have Furious first pick and second pick coming up after that one. Flores making perfect sense, especially considering we're on to Clubhouse here. A lot of tight angles, a lot of rooms that you really cannot access directly. So do need to see him get knocked out there to make that a bit easier. Yeah, it's always been such a fantastic pick for a lot of these different squads to be able to get rid of any multitude of utilities, whether it be evil eyes all the way down to deployable shields. Mare will be banned out for Furia's defensive ban, and Exo will also remove Kai. Now, just to remind you guys, Thatcher still is in play, so this is more or less just a spot ban for them, just making things a little bit easier and making it to where Exit doesn't necessarily have to force Thatcher into their lineup. So expected first site choice coming out here as well now from Exit going directly into the basement that has, at least in North America, become very much the go-to for most teams here as they'll start out and, generally speaking, have a pretty good chance to win that out on the defensive side. I would expect this round to be no different. We'll see what type of aggression Furia can bring to the table, though. They're also bringing the expected lineup. Maverick for the backup hard breach if necessary. Thermite taking over the primary. Defenders and aside from that, we did not see Thatcher being eliminated. Uh, despite that, however, for a lot of teams, he kind of moves out of the way for comfort picks, so we're not going to see him be brought in just yet by Fury. They won't necessarily need it as teams have, of course, found plenty of ways to execute into these sites without necessarily needing that style of utility. Yes, indeed. And for Xset, it's going to be downstairs to the basement initially here. We'll have Thunderbird along for the ride. Uh, operator we haven't got to see too much of today, at least inside of the matchups that you and I have casted, but I believe we got to see her a couple of different games that were viewed by uh, different parties. And well, now we're going to have him here for Gomez, and those cone stations will surely be able to eddy anybody that needs it later on in the round once things start getting down to the nitty gritty. Fury about to be out here and on to the board as they are going to be going for a pretty traditional operator lineup when it comes to Clubhouse. Like I said, not any huge surprises showing up inside of this first round. That will have to wait until a later oh, point well, in it, but okay, wow. Uh, handy. Did he, did he run out? No. A surprise what? kill. Oh, no, he, there was a punch hole. Wow, fantastic eyes on Handy for that. That is definitely one that's pretty difficult to see at that range. Pretty impactful player going down to Yaga being removed from play. Hopefully all the cameras were set up, but okay, things are going very quickly. Furia going to make mincemeat of the words I said, where they tend to play a bit of a slower style of Siege. Not the case here at the start. They're taking as much control as they can of this top four. They want to clear out this roam early on, and so far they're succeeding in doing so, but Gomez is still alive and well here. He'll need to be dealt with before they can focus on the site. He's going to start to respond a little bit here. Brings Fantasy down, gets the confirmation too. We'll try to ditch through the hatch. It looks like it's a successful retreat. He still needs to make his way down through main stairs though, and that's where he's going to run into some big issues. Well, the good news is now is since he's gotten these kills and been able to equalize, he can more than likely delay an extended period of time over here inside of Strip. Even past that, if he's allowed to just exist here, he could potentially rotate back in later. Handy's actually not even going to drone him out. Looks in the hallway, tries to find him inside of Billiards, but obviously nobody home. And this is going to be a huge time sink here here for Furia. Gomez continuing to creep forward here, looking to make a secondary amount of impact against the push from Furia. This is a big mistake with Furia going for a bit of a haphazard clear of the upstairs hold. They didn't lock down Gomez at any point, so he's now wasting a massive amount of time. Furia do not have the confidence to move forward further into the basement while he's here, and oh my goodness, they let he him out. <laughs> they just let him out. No one has Overwatch on main stairs. He was hiding out here by bathroom pretty much the entire time, but he just wraps right around them as they try to push him and heads downstairs, so he'll survive, and now we just go into a normal 3 3v3 late round. Yeah, the biggest grin on his face as Furia practically opened the door for him and allow him to just escape back to the basement. Furia now have to try and figure out a plant spot here with a minute remaining. They still have some options here for soft breach potential to try and get some verticality across the top of Armory, but it's going to be hard fought. They definitely still have some hard breach they'll be able to pop these hatches with and start applying some pressure across the board, but for Xset, this is going to be a fa uh, fairly straightforward affair. They've got Nitro cells, they've got smokes on Kino. They're just awaiting the arrival of the offense. Andy once again preparing this drone right here for the rest of Fury. Started this round out well for the squad and gonna look to try and carry it even further here. As the first to fall was Iago with that punch roll. Spirits the next. Now who's gonna fall yet here? Diaz picking up the next drag. Kino as well, shutting it down. Furia cannot maintain in the 3v3 and X set take initial control. Exet excited already. You can hear him all the way across the room as round one will go into their back pocket. And a pretty interesting, uh, I, I think that's obviously the best way to put it, opening part of the round is Furia just There's went for ran it. up into the building. <laughs> went for that it. was it. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, yeah, aggressive, sure, but I'm, I mean, in the most grandiose possible way. I am assuming what ended up happening was after the kill against uh, Keener Yaga at the mm. beginning there, they probably think, all right, there's going to be like one person max remaining up here, which is overwhelmed with 
like two to three of us, then we can focus on the basement too. I don't think they were expecting as much resistance, and for them to be as well prepared for that type of a push as well when it finally came to bear against them. Yeah, well, also for X set, I mean, I think they capitalized on the situation pretty damn well. We saw them, you know, have those late rotations come through the top floor, especially for, I believe, DS that ended up actually climbing up the, um, uh, it was either him or Gomez that ended up actually coming up cash stairs there for a moment, and ended up uh, eventually rotating back down. But it's those little, you know, side pieces of pressure that come through that Furia aren't exactly ready for. They're so tunnel vision to try to clear out that top floor. They're not exactly suspecting another defender to try and rotate into them, especially at a time frame like that. So now for Furia, more than likely going to slow things down a bit and try and gather more map control before immediately trying to take it to exit. Start of the real round begins now. Here is Furia. Just to clear out the second floor hole that Exit has gone for here. No huge change ups from the Exit side of things, just the appropriate ones needed for the secondary site that they fall into now. As far as Furia is concerned, a lot of the same as well. Maverick being kept in, Ace also swapped out now. We're going to see the rest of Furia try to work their way through here. Continue to clear out the remnants of X set. Away from that though, already seeing Miracle work on opening up this main balcony access point. Shouldn't be too much of a delay past this. This is usually the first thing we see our attackers go for. Again, not much resistance in there from X set either. They're just gonna let this one get opened up as is kind of the way this general plays out. Yes, indeed. And it's gonna be a little bit of a lull here initially. Well, the first minute, this X set able to stave off Furia for the time being, but they're mostly dedicating themselves to drones as well as a few odds and ends just to make sure that X set can't get around their overall attack setup. To at least I'm destroy a couple of boards at the bottom here. Gomez obviously knowing where that claymore is as well due to the audio that he heard to his left. So he does have the potential to hop out here, but it's going to be hard fought. He's going to have to get the claymore and immediately 180 in order to take the fight, and he'll get it. Wow. That was gorgeous from Gomez. Those beautiful mechanics made out on full display here. He'll finally get taken down after that, but that's one LMG out of the way, and actually don't even have to worry about any more. Fantasy gone, STK now gone as well as Yago will take him out inside a bar connect. And Spirits potentially with one as well, but no, it's Yogg yet again. Miracle will go down. Spirits, some amazing shots, and Xset with a flawless round. Xset beautifully done. Starts out, well, right from the beginning of it, too, with Gomez getting aggressive outside of the blue window, shutting down the repel play, already removing some of the security that seemingly Fury had built up for themselves on that repel position. And from that point forward, it's just domination, whether it's the front door or here, inside of the catwalks on Garage. It all goes Xset's way and gives them a flawless round to get them two out of three of their site lockdowns. Gonna go to the third expected one now, Jim Bedroom, before they rotate back down to the basement on round four. Yeah, that, that was just strong across the board there from Xset. Strong yeah, garage the hold, head. Spirits playing that out masterfully, as well as continually applying pressure to Furia across the board, whether it be through secret stairs or just having Yogg rotate around and try and hold one of the cutoffs uh, near the center of the map. And all of it puts extremely well. Xset now up 2-0 on their defensive half. Continuing on the warpath here in Fury, looking for solutions in terms of how to get them off of it here. We'll see what exactly they try to evolve themselves into. Not much going to be changing up in terms of the operator lineup in round number three. We do see the Finca coming into the fold for Fantasy. Second, that is looking pretty much identical. Still keeping the triple heartbeat in play too. We are going to see a slight change up in the soft reach department. Just the switch up from the sledge over towards the buck. Exit with a multitude of shields here at the top of <laughs> cash, John. I do believe we have a few ADSs to go along with that. DS will more than likely apply some discs later on as he's just holding on to those to see what move could potentially be made. Maybe they're going to throw in a bunch of stuns or something like that, and he'll be able to just pocket those discs and then apply them later when needed. And now for Furia, what about we are? As they'll be coming in from the west side, we're going to have a delete or something along those lines. Ah, oh, it was Kino, I do believe, popping the hatch for Gomez through logistics. But we definitely did have something. Yeah, STK and his Selma charges going off. I do believe that's over on Jacuzzi. Weren't able to exactly break that rare. You're going to need to get a better angle on that. And X set, they've been able to equalize already. Two of the Furia members late to the party. It's a three versus three. Kino's got some extra smoke, so keep applying them to where the pern is and see if he can try and hold them back. Fantasy was a very serious damage. He'll go down. He's picked up by Kino. Diaz trying to get in behind yet again, but it won't happen this time as it's down to the 2v2 with two minutes remaining. Furia, they're taking risks here, especially with that haphazard execute, but unfortunately the fumble on the hatch drop on top of the detached execute that followed it up 
really throws them into a bad spot. But still, they're able to keep it winnable here at a two versus two due to some aggression coming out there from Fantasy, distracting and allowing for another player to work their way in. Let's pick up an additional frag here. A bit of a misplay, though, from Fantasy. Ultimately, he's not able to make much happen with that push through the Toxic Gas. And now turned what could have been a 3v2 into a 2v2 here. Furia trying their hardest not to make a secondary mistake, but at the same time, Xset doesn't want to feed anything over towards this Furia roster. Rare is the first to take challenge at the top of main stairs rap, and it's going to be STK, though, to win it out against the second player from Xset. Everything going to fall to our internal bathroom player, Kino, but he won't be able to maintain. And now Furia finally picking up one of their own. Well, it wasn't the easy road, but it was theirs, and they were able to claim the round. Furia finally getting one on the board after round three in a pretty explosive manner. I mean, immediately trying to drop into logistics and take as many fights as they potentially can. I also believe that was partnered with a rush in from the jacuzzi wall and potentially someone trying to fight around main stairs or balcony. We really didn't get the best uh, you know, advantageous position on that. So either way, Furia able to make it through the thick of it. I think that's the big thing there. Very scrappy round, but able to find the frags when they needed the most. Well, let's see if Furia can keep it rolling here. Some good aggression coming out from them. Once again, playing a very, very fast style of attacking side at the moment. Well, Xset responding to it quite nicely in most scenarios there. Unfortunately, just falling a little bit too short. Giving away too many players to 1v1s inside of that previous round there. In part due to their own choices and in part due to the kind of claustrophobic nature of the gym site. Hopefully, will not repeat itself as they head back down onto more expensive pastures in the basement. Ten seconds remaining. Still going to dedicate themselves to this Roan game here. You can signify that by not only the Mozzie coming through, but the Mute Jammers for Spirits, as he'll be able to hold up a lot of these reinforced walls towards the outside of the building, like Jacuzzi as well as CCTV. DS will just be here to try and pick some things up with his pass and potentially have a drone that could work against the offense later into the round. As for Furia, they haven't changed up all too much across the board, all except for Fantasy, who is now on IQ with 552 Commando. SDK starting things off well for Fury at the beginning of the fourth round by being able to knock out Gomez, catching his aggression this time where previously didn't work out too well. Yaga still a factor, however, on the inside of this upstairs room, but there's a lot of pressure broiling itself out, ready to knock him down, and we're going to see it come to bear immediately. Fantasy with the pre-fire lineup has no trouble knocking Yaga out. This is a much cleaner fight so far from Fury, but the response is still there as Spirit reascends upstairs and is able to trade back against Fantasy before more than likely falling back now that he's been able to make the numbers a bit more winnable. It's a huge pickup. Getting rid of the IQ in this position with Valkyrie in play means that Xset's going to have a lot of info game going into the later parts of this round, but it doesn't really matter if Furia kills everybody first before we get there. Spirit's trying to swing out and equalize. He'll be able to do so and at least get it to a 3v2. A lot more power roll than it was before, but still a really long road ahead of them. SDK, he'll get the information on Spirit's rotating back to site, which more than likely signifies that the majority of this map is clear and they just need to start working on their verticality as well as their hatch work. Oh, oh my a bit of a surprise oh. here for Kino, and he gets Kino. away with a kill. There's a second player following him up as well. Waits for the spray to finish and sneaks right through. How does he do that? As Furia, Handy surely would have traded that back out, but no, is not able to find him. As Kino runs away, keeps himself alive, and evens out the numbers yet again. Here is where we saw Exit falter previously, though. This pinch push coming in for the two remaining Furia members. STK from up on top, or rather Handy, I should say, from up on top, and STK working his way in from dirt. Exit, it's all been left to Kino and and Spirits, already seen Kino play out just a few seconds prior, of course, with his wild push up the stairs to knock out the first member of the remaining squad for Fury here. Away from that, trying to isolate the drone intel, but it doesn't work. SDK has locked down the first player's position, but it's not going to be able to win the fight. Instead, it goes to Spirits. Now I already know where the play is going to come from with regards to Handy. They block out the hatch. He drops through it regardless. Has been able to get himself access to Arsenal and picks up the first kill. Another clutch potentially brewing here for the Fury roster. That would tie the game up as well, but a bit more work needing to be done. A bit of intel needing to be eliminated here in this specific case as he knocks out that camera on the back line. Won't give an angle over to Kino as he now swings out from the bottom of main stairs. He's going to try to deny this first oh! attempt. No! <laughs> It'll just outright deny the round as the Toxic Fave finishes off the very low HP of Handy. 
That was an incredible round there from Kino. And, and Exit overall, like we were talking about how the initial round was pretty scrappy, but that right there was uh, the only way back into the round was aggression. They had to fight Furia. They had to try and equalize and to accomplish that, especially with the way that Kino is. I mean, that's not, oh, I'm just going to hold the main stairs and hope somebody peeks me. He is going in search of Furia on main stairs and still able to gather that kill when it mattered most. Equalizes and forces Furia into a really bad situation well, they actually have to split both the remaining members. One has to go dirt, one has to try and hold things down on Hatch, and they just don't have the pressure any longer to try and take it to the two defending X set members. So, an interesting attack and repick if we see it get locked in there. Take a look at Fantasy real quick, as we're going to potentially have a Fuse coming into play here. Very specific use cases for it, and this might be one of them if they end up going for it. So we'll keep our eyes locked onto that. But aside from that, Exit, of course, retaking their control with the successful basement play. Now just looking to move right along schedule here to their other hold, which is going to be upstairs inside of Cash and CCTV. Same operator lineup as the previous hold. They wanted, of course, so why not lock it in? And speaking of locking things in, we are indeed going to have the Fuse play for Fantasy. I love to see it. Just to update you guys on what has happened to Fuse recently. He got a big bump to his cluster charges. Yes, he doesn't need to have four of those now. And also, just for that little icing on the cake, they go through hard walls now. So he will be able to put those on, say, like CCTV or the single panel in construction and just run amok of the entire setup of Xset. The, the cluster charges just spew everywhere. Here we go. It's really, really strong for him, and that's exactly what they're going to go for. And here come the hockey bucks. Gonna throw those in. Unfortunately, only one may be eaten up by that ADS. The rest of it is going to knock out quite a bit of utility hanging out in the walls. One doesn't make it too deep enough, so you're still gonna see that Banshee in the back left corner survive it. But now that has gone by, they'll also breach the walls. No more opportunities to deploy the remaining three of those charges. Still gonna have some other opportunities to run on the map to potentially use them, but more than likely it's past the point of no return for Fantasy. Not really a moment where he's gonna be able to pick that up and potentially use it as an exploitative chance. But now it's gonna be down to Furious drone game to try and see what their next potential move could be. They do have to worry about Yaga currently inside of construction, but Exit have practically sat on their hands for most of this round. Not too much action here for round five just yet, as Fury has only gotten the CCTV wall open. Now with some angles here, trying to see if we can potentially find anybody playing around the construction area. A beautiful drop here from Miracle. He'll catch Yaga completely off guard, and that's going to be the open frag they were wishing for. They're continuing to hold this back now. Waiting for the re-peak to come nice. in, and he's oh, <laughs> has the correct patience batter. about it. Indeed, will succeed in picking up the killer. Almost like it went the other way, but not in that, not in this case here. Miracle able to secure the first pickup for himself against Spirit. It's actually second one now. He managed to take down Yaga a few seconds prior to some great early impact coming in from him. And Rare is going to stack on top of that X set, getting a tad too aggressive here, giving over far too many early gunfights and leaving themselves with a shell of their former defense in a 2v5. No, I wouldn't even say it's that. I think it's a pure patience from Furia as X set has. Uh, they've been practically murdered every single time they attempt to do anything at all. I mean, even for Yaga, he's just trying to play safe inside of construction, and he has somebody just jump off the roof and take a gunfight with him. Uh, Furia, a heck of a lot more calculated than that, and they earned that flawless round. Well earned indeed, so we will wait and see. Now, if we're going to see Exit decide to retry this site, given the fairly one-sided nature of how that just played out there, or if they'll extend over towards Jim, where, once again, also managed to drop that one earlier on. You're even going to see it go contested there for a sec as they are trying to click it for themselves before the IGL made the call, but it does end up going towards Jim once everything is said and done here. So that is the site that they'll try to play out here, feeling that that one was a little bit closer than their most recent attempt in cash and CCTV. I would generally tend to agree with this choice. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you here. I, I think that Jim Bedroom that is, at least through the years, for Clubhouse became an easier and easier site to play, especially as we've added more ops to be able to assist with this. I think that also Jim Bedroom makes quite a few teams very creative in the way that they want to hold things. I think we've seen like a multitude of iterations of whether it be operator lineups or the way that people think that you should hold things across. Uh, you know, and it's always been such an amazing site in order to do that, especially with the play that you can have around, you know, cash, like what X that's doing right now. You can connect the uh, double panel there, uh, or rather the single panel between construction and cash, and that's really 
really nice cross angles to be able to support some of your teammates uh, and also extend all the way out towards cash with like a shield or something like that and slap some ADSs down. It just makes it such a nuisance to clear because uh, for the most part, when you're trying to go for gym bedroom offense, you're really looking to try and get that jacuzzi wall open, start applying pressure to the master balcony and stuff like that. And obviously, that takes manpower. Trying to clear out cash sites starting at the cash stairwell requires a lot of manpower. So all of a sudden, you know, you're running into a couple of different rocks and hard places and you're trying to get things figured out. The good news is, is well, John, we don't have to figure it out. Furia does. So we'll have to see what they want to do here as they're finally out and about. About 30 seconds in. Let's take a quicker peek at what Fury are going to be attempting. There's no real surprise to start things off. They do need to clear this extension to the CCTV and cash. They'll pop open the wall corresponding towards it. Not going to be much resistance inside of the, the CCTV room itself, but a little bit deeper than that inside of cash. That's when things will start to get a bit more troublesome here for the Fury to clear. You can see them only making a like headroom clear here, not even actually opening up the breach entirely so that they can take down anyone who wants to get aggressive against that breach, but not going to be able to see them respond to it outright due to the angle that was created. And you can see as well, this is a bit tricky for the members of Fury. You've got Diaz holding on his own with a red rotate being opened as well. And then Spirits has this chopped up ceiling or rather top wall, I guess you'd call this, to be able to try and chuck out a nitro through the breach, waiting for the rest of it to be opened, I believe, for an actual entry attempt to be made. You might have to watch out for garage presence too, as it looks like another member of Fury has managed to sneak themselves over towards Catwalk. What a fantastic delay thus far by x -Ted. It's really just been the defensive setup that's been slowly forcing Furia to take their time. And they're going to lose Rare early here. So all of this time sink, all for not at the current moment, but Fantasy's been able to get in behind the x members. He won't be able to claim Spirits. Wow. In fact, Spirits, he shoots back, John. He'll claim the kill, and he's still holding on to cash. Very surprised that kill with the way it did there, trying to be able to turn that fight back around. Spirits thought he was dead to rights there when they had the lock on him through that box sitting on top of the cash desk. but wasn't able to follow it through, unfortunately, and a great response from Spirits. Save his own life there, bring the numbers down, maybe an even more dire situation for Furia. Spirits, still on deck, waiting for the swing to work itself in here, and you can see they are trying to get a little bit inside so they can start putting pressure on construction while still having not cleared out Spirits, but they'll finally accomplish that. Now he's been baited towards the door, and it's going to be some great play from STK to accomplish that. Finally get their first kill on the board. If they can work together to get one more, they're in even territory. The problem is that time bank starting to get a little bit low here at around 40 seconds remain. Yeah, a little overzealous from Spirits, but able to get a lot of a lot done inside of that position. So I just got to give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes down to that. Gomez in a pivotal position here inside of Logistics. Andy will be holding on to the main wall for Jacuzzi as Miracle forces his way into construction. An offensive matrix being built around this side as Fury will find their second mark and equalize here. The smoke damage starting to bleed through though onto Miracle as Diaz takes down one, Diaz takes down two, and Gomez will wrap it up with a bow, making a 4-2 half for Xset. Not a surprise to see that round breaking down the way it did when you consider how things opened up there. So much control inside of Xset's court before the play even really began with Furia trying to clear out the extension inside of CCTV and Cash. Some good attempts to battle it back when they're able to catch, as you said, an overzealous spirit speaking towards the door. But even that kill wasn't enough as they were still down by one and just too claustrophobic of a push inside of Jim allows for exit to get revenge from their last attempt on that site. Lock it down, giving them a 1-1 record on the half and as well securing the 4-2 overall scoreline. The team's now switch sides and it's Exet's turn to go on to the attack. They need three rounds to close this one down. It is indeed. And this is where things get uh, potentially damning for Furia because Exet's offensive sides have been ludicrous inside of the NAL. I mean, very, very aggressive fronts, especially with the way that Spirits likes to call for this team. We could see a lot of calculated plays come through. So, but again, it's going to be pretty hard to say for you and I, because we didn't really get to see Exet's earlier games. So it yeah. could be, you know, a little off kilter at the current moment. But luckily enough, we are here to find that out for all of you at home. Maybe some setup still to be done here for Furious. They'll prep the hatch for impacts, although STK, the only one with one. Attackers must locate and defuse the bomb. Just nitro cells for the most part beyond that. Three of them, in fact. So Fury actually looking to make heavy use of that inside. Yeah, the, the best way to counter hard breach is <laughs> yeah, chuck yeah, a nitro cell out. Just blow them up. Exactly. They're not going to blow us up, so that's fair. <laughs> an eye for an eye, as yeah, they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. 
Either way, Fury here looking to really make their mark, and they, they need to right off the bat. Oh, there he is. So psychotic man. Rare, trying to go for a crazy swing, exposes himself, and it's going to take quite a bit of damage. Fantasy also getting hit a bit too, it looks like. Oh, Spirit struck what? by a bullet. He's or two. outside. Spirit's getting hit oh up here. Oh my goodness. Alive in a corner. He's been brought down, trying to self revive, but he had already used that adrenal surge. You can see he was affected by it in the midst of that fight. Gomez gets revenge, though, and once again, it is X set to take the lead here. And you can see Fantasy creeping up on the breach currently being made by the main balcony as Fantasy's going to try to get in the way of this too. What an incredible moment there for Gomez. When, when your number's called, just like we were talking about in that previous game, sometimes you have to step up and Gomez almost instantaneously refrags onto STK. And now Furia, worse for wear yet again here. And Gomez almost oh. sneakily gets in through Oil Pip. A miracle will shut him down with the SMG-11. That's the free one, though. That's the one that Exit doesn't necessarily oh, oh. need to worry about. Oh. Yoko on the chase, but handy. He gets the over-the-top rope kill this time around. Spins it back onto Yaga, and as well, Fury are just going to race themselves back down into the basement where they'll be much more secure for this remaining minute and a half. Kino as well as Diaz have a lot of work to do, and thankfully, they've got a lot of time to do it, but this setup is going to be tough to clear, even with the health advantage. Yeah, pretty miscalculated here from x at the later part of the round, as there's caught off guard by Furious rotations, especially around main stairs, get really, really punished, and now the two versus three, but a lot of potential here in this position. Minute and ten seconds remain, and Diaz with a lot of drone potential, and that's exactly what he'll be on to. Also past that, all of these members for Furia at the current moment die within one to two bullets so it's gonna be very close yes, fantasy will actually much. end up spraying down kino so many bullets flooding in through the wall of blue at the current moment diaz more than likely will have so many crosses held on him here it's gonna be pre-fire central as he bounces back and forth off the ac unit here in blue just panic peeking so much to try and find anything he can work with nearly is able to negotiate a kill right there but instead it is miracle that wins out the fight furia with a definitive start to the second half here, puts themselves on the board for their basement hold, and sets themselves up for a comeback as well, as they're immediately just one round behind Xset's scoreline by taking the first round of the second half. They really got a feel for Xset there. It, feel, it felt like to them that they could get away with a lot more than they definitely could. Furia taking it to them as soon as they try to overextend themselves towards site, which was, at least to them, unsuspected, right? Xset's like, yo, we're gonna sneak down here. No one should be exactly ready for us to be inside of blue and trying to take these aggressive fights, but but they were wrong. Furia has definitely dealt with these situations before, and they're going to handle this one quite handedly yet again. So for Xset, their lead stands at a precipice here, able to negotiate a very successful defensive half at 4-2 with some pretty chaotic play following up behind that. That's kind of what we expected from Xset, of course, here. But generally speaking, you'd expect a much closer game with that type of play style and the kind of mixed results, the mixed gunfights that have come with that. Xset, though, took the lead, however, are now at risk of losing it. Furia close behind here. Another fairly easy to defend. Defender side in sight coming up here inside of CCTV and cash as well. Xset looking to breach through here. Plenty of hard to be bring out to the table to accomplish that. No real surprises on the attacker lineup. And more importantly, we're only going to get that one repick, it looks like, over towards a lion instead of a buck for Yaga. Pretty strong pick here as it'll isolate a lot of these Furia members and make these gunfights a heck of a lot easier as they won't be allowed to move when those EE1Ds do indeed go off. As for the rest of Xset's lineup, it's fairly straightforward. The Mav coming in as well as the Ace to try and help with the wall. And speaking of the wall, Furia potentially where that Xset could be rushing, but obviously not going to be the case here. We have no thermite, so won't have anybody just explode the wall open and instantaneously gain access for everyone that wants to try and play flat. But that's why we saw Furia end up putting that gas canister on the wall. And up here, we'll start things up for Diaz as he starts torching things across, and we'll soon have this wall soft. Gomez pop this open and actually get down to these gunfights. Yeah, defenders did uh, chunk it a little bit the wall there. If you guys notice those bits of soft. Shotgun pull, that's just kind of slowing down the opening a bit. It's not really going to serve any massive advantage, but it just takes an extra 10 seconds or so off the clock as they need to uh, be able to utilize that. We do have that Koyo canister sitting on the other side of it. Oh, nice spot from a Gomez to get a bit of damage, and I believe onto Miracle there. And Miracle, even testing it a second time here. They will need to watch out, though, when they pop this open. It's like I said, that Goyo canister sits on the other side. 
Unfortunately enough, though, as you were talking about the holes being shot, the whole reason that they do that is because it makes the breach so messy. Look at the amount oh, of time DS has had yeah. to stay on this torch. And it's all because this bottom portion of the wall, there's a little pixel that's still holding it over towards the left-hand side here. You can actually see it towards DS. He literally just pinged it. So that right there is what's holding up the wall at the current moment. DS will actually end up taking a lot Goyo. of damage via that Goyo fire that leaks out of the breach. And STK almost with a kill there as well. Exit trying to find a way through this round at the current moment. It's actually a really smart play from Handy to do that, putting it on the wall there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see other teams oh. start implementing that. Another top rope swing here from STK. He pays the price for it, but Fantasy immediately exchanges. Yaga maintains control, however, with a second pickup for Exit and brings it down to a 4v3. It's all going to be on the site players now as we drill down to the last minute. Oh, it's starting to boil up to a point here. Set. They've gotten control of Garage, but they still need to get things cleared out and have the setup start pointing towards an actual plan. Kino going to take a lot of damage, but Kino's going to down the member instead. Miracle actually won't be able to be picked up just yet. Hopefully can get in behind the green box and potentially get picked up here by Rare, but no, Handy's going to go down before then. Kino, I mean, he's on fire at the current moment. Not literally, hopefully, but... As of right now, they're doing a bang-up job of holding things down on this offensive side. Rare's going to try and rotate around. He does not have a Nitro sub for this, but he most definitely has a shotgun. As he'll move down through the lounge area. Won't be able to get up the cash there as finally Gomez will pick him up. They're going to rush up the back end as well. Miracle, so much to deal with at the current moment, but he does have an opportunity here. Frag grenades out, stun grenades out. Gomez with a lot of damage dealt to him. Miracle with no potential answer just yet. He'll get one, he'll get two, and John, that was getting close. <laughs> Close there if he's able to produce that shotgun. A lot of damage potentially coming out onto the Xset members, but they'll lock it down. A little dodgy there, but thankfully the round aside from that, pretty one-sided towards Exit there. The constant aggression roiling in. And it's a shame because I like what we were seeing from Fury, especially with the Goyo canister positioning. You probably saw that second one that was just beyond the breach. So even if that first one did minimal damage, they can still wait, deploy that second one when the actual execute comes in and hold them back once again there. Unfortunately, when those Goyo canisters were exploded, there was far too much remaining pressure from other points on the map still coming out against the setup, so they weren't really able to capitalize on it as much as they would have liked to. Exet's patience game is really what got them so far inside of that round, especially for Yaga. Yaga just sat downstairs inside a garage and was like, all right, I'm just going to hold down here. We'll see what potentially happens with the remaining time that we have. And then Fury would just jump over the balcony and yep. gift him a kill. That's all he wanted that entire time, and that's exactly what he got. So just those little moments of decision making where it's either overextend try and take the fight with a Raptors guy or just sit still, let your team try to build things up to a certain point around the map and pull Furia to you know different points and make it where they have to focus okay, on other things. Remaining. You might randomly have a Jaeger jump down from a balcony, you know? Bring this back and really highlights the kind of mishmash of regional play styles that Xset has gone for here because they're executing into that last round and very much the same way that Furia was doing back in the first half as well, using that patience to really suss out some of the members of the defensive side there and be able to take them down when they finally take that extra step or two into the open that they necessarily wouldn't have been able to do. Yeah, as for Furia, though, they have to get a hold of these nerves, John. I mean, if we start to see them be more and more antsy throughout these rounds, Xset's going to continue to punish them in very comparable ways to what we saw inside of round eight. But now for STK, he's feeling himself. He'll be downstairs inside of Billiards, peeking out of the double window, but won't be feeling himself for much longer as he no longer has a pulse. Fantasy will be able to capitalize on Kino, though, so that'll be the ace off the board, but we still have some hard breeds in the likes of DS and Maverick. It's going to potentially be a problem for DS, though, if we run into issues knocking out the wall. I'm going to assume that that won't happen a second time there. That's just a bit of an unlucky maneuver with what ended up happening with the wall. And didn't ultimately trip them up from winning the round either. So, like I said, able to get over that without too much of an issue. Going to be looking to accomplish the same thing as it is, once again, that hold on the inside of CCTV and Cash. You can already see Fantasy paying attention to the breach just in case our Maverick reveals something a bit too much. But now he's going to make sure he starts from the corner this time to and he's lane prone. avoid that problem from the previous round. And I sure, I'm pretty sure he got the left he, side. He got it. So I think he's good. And there we go. Just needs to get the last remaining bit of this half. And we should see the wall fall away. Oh, no. Uh, yep. There's it's that a, it's oh. a literally right in the center, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, How does this happen twice in a uh, row, though? I, I mean, DS, you're just not the map, man. Get it, like, man, just, get it. just give it up. Oh, Where is dude. It? Hey, well, the crappy, the crappy part there here, go, there, there we go. go. There the, the crappy <laughs> part about that is that, like what we were talking about before, when they end up breaking that wall, you have to lay prone in order to guarantee that, but that almost guarantees that somebody shoots at you as well. Uh, and that's why we see a lot of people try to crouch and torch it, but that makes it to where those lines that are made when you break that soft wall actually don't torch through the reinforcement. 
enforcement properly. So you have to hit that prone, but I mean, at least he's able to get it open this time around. The problem is now is that it seems like it's costed them some bodies in order to do so. Yeah, this is not looking like the confidence we saw out of Exit in the previous round, nor just the you know, amount of setups we saw oh. before. They don't have Ready these angles bearing down on the defenders. As you can see, Diaz swinging in to pick up that trade at least, but it's too late. The one for one is not going to mean a whole lot at this point here because Fury can do that. Pick up one more on their own, and now this is already a nearly unwinnable situation for Diaz. He's got a 1v3 set before him. He does have a fairly healthy amount of time to play into, but so much to clear out. This is a winnable fight at top red. It doesn't look like that player has a lot of support. He's going to mask the unpinning sound of the nade as it goes in. The, looks like it's going to get eaten up by one of those magnets. So Andy has his life saved by his own utility. Good placement of that yeah, there. Nice attempt at it from Diaz, but doesn't ultimately wow. work out. That's an even better one, though. Rips the head right off of Miracle. Two more players to go. You got about 10 seconds for each one. Let's see if he can get the job done as he enters the site. Already has pressure against him. He's going to go for a plan attempt, actually, to bait players out. No one takes it. Oh, I correct myself. Rare does. He comes out into the open. There's the stick now, probably, as Handy's got to rerotate into CCTV. He's going off, oh. but no! Handy just barely closing it down for Furia as he gets this 1v1. I was so very scary there. In fact, I thought Handy was just playing for the audio cue. I thought he was just trying to bounce back and forth and get him off the case and then potentially rotate into cash to try and dwindle down the remaining time that they actually had there. But gives Diaz a chance instead and wins it pretty handedly. So now for Furia, after we go into this tech timeout, they will be within one round of catching up to Exit here on Club. Very, very close between both of these teams right now. Fury more than likely not wanting to take any risks in this upcoming round as they'll be repeating the basement hold. Should be actually fairly well secured on this one as they took it at the outset of this opening, or they took it at the outset of this half as well. But still, their coach, as you can see here, has a lot of input to give. They have not used the pause just yet. There was still a phase of this matchup here just a few minutes ago where Exit was truly dominating. So probably some input from back then, making sure that they don't run into those same pitfalls as they make a rerun. And actually, if you'll notice, the site has changed since we went into the pause. They're actually going for a gym bedroom hold. So it seems like they got something to throw at Exit here, possibly. Yeah, I, and honestly, I think that's exactly what we're loading up here. We got the Womai and also the Valkyrie coming through and potentially some castle barricades. Just just to make it more fun. You know, you want to try and deny as many angles as you can, especially on a site like that. If you can potentially keep things locked down on, say, like the main stairs, that makes your life a whole heck of a lot easier instead of having to constantly deal with that pressure around the top of main. But past that, I mean, there's so many different ways you can utilize Castle on this, whether it be, you know, the master side windows or what have you. There's always going to be some avenues that are going to be able to shut down. So see that brought to the table as well as a nook coming through for Gomez. All right, let's take a look here. Let's see if Xset can maintain their lead. They've been staying ahead by one or two throughout this half so far. Have not managed to drop the outright lead as we started 4-2, of course. But as you can see, Furia has kept right on to Xset's tail. We did have a Blackbeard pick initially for Iago, but it seems like that's being re-picked away. So that's definitely not going to be staying here. Yana is already locked in there for the re-pick. More interesting one, though, is going to be down towards Gomez. He's potentially going to be swapping Zofia for the Nook. And more than likely, that's going to stay as well. Look, of course, we're seeing more and more out of her because she has the nades and, of course, the utility kit. Players finding out wow. how to use her more and more. So we're going to continue to see that brought in by more and more teams, I believe. But never mind. It gets swapped away. They won't go for it. That's super sad, honestly. Just looking across Furia's board here, this is almost a perfect round to have a nook. There's not yep. any barbed wire. There's nothing you really have to worry about. And, in fact, they've brought Valkyrie, so they're more than likely leaning more into their info game and trusting those cameras as to what they're seeing. And that's where Nook capitalizes. So to not have her here, I mean, obviously, Obviously, X said they still have a lot of different ways to break this down, especially with Yaga on Sledge. I mean, you still have the frag grenades. You got a great gun on the L85 and the Sledgehammer. So, you know, there's no real argument sake there, but it would have been really cool to see Nook in that uh, situation. There's no Flores in play, remind you as well. So maybe they're worried about their ability to knock out things like deployable shields and, and other forms of utility a bit deeper into the site where they can be a bit peskier to access. And maybe they're hoping the lifeline saves themselves there. Potential for Soft Breach, too, if Yaga ends up going down earlier on here. So, I'll be disappointed we didn't see the Nook as well. He's really definitely seen it before, but Fantasy ready to fight off immediately against this pressure coming in from the balcony wall there. He's going to fire at least one bullet back against Yaga, but quickly falls away from that and takes up a security position instead. And get droned out here inside of construction and finally catches up with that drone. And now for Yaga, again clearing out the top of red. Fury have already titled it out of cash, but Rare is on the hunt. Gomez will be droning upstairs. No one will check out Secret, and that is where Rare currently resides. He does definitely have a few different facets he can potentially abuse here on these Exet members as my grin grows by tenfold. Simply sitting in this moment, 
potentially try and go for garage. Also a cash here, stairwell, but it's all gonna be on this timer, depending on when he can potentially make his move. He's gotta get through quite a bit of utility, and he's actually just gonna straight up shoot the drone and leave. So now Kino's gonna be looking down towards cash here for the time being, but still so much time on the board for Xset, and a lot of damage dealt to spirits here from STK off-site, so might be even delaying a little bit more. Set lining themselves up mainly oh. on the outside of the building here to push themselves forward. Nitro is deployed, nearly is able to grab Spirits. As he's brought down to about a third of his remaining HP after that blows up, but still staying alive, staying in the fight, and thankfully keeping those adrenal surges in check too, so he'll be able to boost himself right back up right around 50% after that boost up there. Oh, oh Nade gonna bank just a little bit. It's gonna do it a bit of damage to these players. Your spirits just can't get lucky in this situation. We are going to see as well that battery go down, but unfortunately it's on the wrong side. So it's not gonna stop this break from being open. Kino oh. going for three <laughs> at the start of this entry. Three members of Fury knocked out. STK, Fantasy, and Handy all eliminated. Miracle is gonna strike back though with not just one, but a second as well. Fury are not done fighting this just yet. Rare needs to reinsert himself into this, but he's been read into. Dios and Spirits get the last two kills. That's Xset up on map point now. How, how the hell does Kino even get that? that? That literally makes zero sense as to how that breaks down, but three kills practically given to the ace, and they'll walk away with yet another round. It's gonna be attack timeout from X set now. They're practically putting Furia on ice. That has to be a tilter after what we just saw. Yeah, again, Furia, keep in mind too, the tactical timeout that they just took like one or two rounds ago to build up all this strategy, build up all of this prowess to finally stop X set from running away with the game, but it doesn't work. And now Butega wants to give some input as well. You can see him very emotive at the moment here. They just need this one last round. He wants to make sure that his input is noted for this potential final round of play here for Xset to lock down the game. One last round, John, separates Xset from their very first international victory. And man, does that have to be something to experience. For a team so that's been together for like two months. Yeah, for a team that's been together for two months, but also for an org that's been in siege and dedicated to you know this product for so very long to not have that yet. Uh, I mean, you have to be extremely excited for them, but Furia definitely do still have some opportunity here to at least force it into overtime and give themselves a chance to steal this away. Pause is ended, folks. We are going back in game now, and it is looking like it's going to be a retry of the basement hold from Furia. So let's see if this will become their okay, graveyard or if it will become their bomb. potential right of ascension to get themselves oh, back into man. the game and into overtime. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's the NA special, baby. It's the NA special, baby. Made famous by Mint, the coach of Dark Zero. The Blitz is in play, as we've seen it time and time again on maps like Oregon, and well, really just Oregon. Blitz can still get a lot done across a map when it comes to clearing out those really hard to reach spaces. You know, unless you have something that's explosive or like a toxic babe, Blitz just gets to run at you, and as soon as you pay too long enough of attention, you're now flashed and you have practically zero chance in order to win that engagement. I mean, even earlier, we saw a Blitz hop over the deployable shield and elbow on Oregon and melee the shield player in order to win out that engagement. I've seen quite a few melee kills coming from the players on Blitz, so they get them pretty mind. often, especially like, like you said, that construction wrap on Oregon is a pretty common spot for it to happen. It's now going to mean that Furia really need to reinforce their extensions, but we can have something else in play here. STK, you can see he's lining up for something outside of this soft breach, and he's got an impact in pocket ready to play. Ooh, try to pre-fire as well on some team intel. We're not going to find it. Unfortunately, those shots do give him away as he backs out from this play. You'd be surprised by the amount of times that you pre-fire those two garage doors and somebody just magically dies outside. So if you're ever hanging out in garage early game, just shoot a couple bullets. You never really know. So either way, though, next set, they're going to take their time here, John. They do not want to try and overextend themselves just yet. We're already 45 seconds in, but they haven't exactly exploded into any part of the map. In fact, they're droning things out currently over near stocks and everything else in between trying to see what's exactly happening the inside clear. of the lounge and yes it's going to be a drawback here is miracle trying to force his way back <laughs> it's a blitz he's got to hightail it out of there spirits is oh. in and he's dead as he immediately ADSs, trying to get into sight that had to be the scariest thing ever just a full speed blitz sprinting directly past your toxic babe not even giving him a chance to really be hit by i don't think he took any damage from it but unfortunately his opponent got way too far back and he had support from teammates so spirits quickly shut down and the blitz play just doesn't really work out this time around. 
Yeah, super unfortunate. You could see that Exet was ultra, also trying to potentially get control of Blue if Spirits did get anything done inside of that push, but obviously not. Fantasy now having a couple of issues of his own, but he'll be able to work his way through it as he'll take down Gomez. With a minute and 20 seconds remaining, Furia, I mean, they just practically put this feather in their cap already. Not too much to worry about for them, especially with STK still on the roam. He can just rotate right back in behind Exit before this execute happens, pick up some extra kills, and that's more than likely Furia within one round. As well, actually, Miracle will go down to Kino. Exit, unfortunately, in my opinion, banking a bit too much on this Blitz play here, and the fact that they've ignored the upstairs clear is going to come back to haunt them in this final minute as you have those dissensions from the upstairs holds looming against them. Exit have to keep a constant flank watch because of this. It'll work out okay, though. Yogg is able to catch STK as he works his way back down here. A 2v3 means that only one of these players needs to pick up an extra kill aside from that. Just one for ones. We'll win it out here for Exit. If Dias get one and Yaga gets two, we've got that 7-4 scoreline locked in. So Furia, I've got to be a little bit Cared about this current situation, and you can tell they're not moving an inch out from their hard lock positions deeper in the site. There, they want X set to take this first step forward, not the other way around. Frag grenade out. Rare will take down Yaga. Now it's a 1v3 for TS Lucas. Fantasy with a quick end to that. And a quad on the round. Furia not out of this one just yet. And I have to agree with you, John. Too many eggs, one basket with the blitz play there. And really oversold their hand as well. It, it really looked like they had a lot of faith in what was going to go down as Spirit swings that door. But like I was saying before, super ill-advised. The fact that you're running through dirt, ADS as blitz coming out the door, more than likely somebody's going to shoot you right in the face. Nine times out of ten. Now, had they cleared out that upstairs hold before going for the dirt play, which, to be fair, is not really how you do that strat. That's fair. Um, <laughs> if they had done that, <laughs> there was a possibility, even if the, bl the, the, the blitz play failed, they probably still could have won that round because they didn't have the, the flanks to worry about, so they wouldn't have had to constantly Attack keep someone on flank watch. But, like I said, it's not really how that strategy plays, so... I mean, but also, inside of the same vein, I do agree with you. I do definitely do think they could have used spirits for that roam clear, yeah. because when it comes to blitz, it's one of the things that, like, he's just an unstoppable force. You don't yep. want to deal with it, so you immediately you, back The problem up. is, if you use it for the roam clear, you can't really use it for the site take because exactly. now they know it's there so well, they, they know it's there to to it. they, they know it's there and they also you more than likely took a decent amount of damage because you are blitz yeah. <laughs> like you know like a couple foot shots yeah a couple first. foot shots your shoulder gets tagged up a little bit you know it, that shield just doesn't fit his body the same as monty let me tell you all right ladies and gentlemen so yeah, xx still on map and match point here but for Fury, only one away from triggering overtime now due to X set all inning on the Blitz play in the previous round, leaving them with only this extra one to play out. Gomez will repick over towards Ayana, not too surprising there, seeing as we were missing it. Those extra nades certainly going to help here as they would have only had four aside from that. Sounds like a lot, really isn't inside of C-Train now, especially with how much utility mitigation is still generally played into it. They actually got a pretty light amount of that, speaking of which, for Fury in this round. Only Fantasy deployed into it as no Jaeger has been picked up by Fury this time, so that extra set of nades might become an extra set of kills here for Exet if they can position them in the correct spot. Yes, indeed. An extended hold here yet again for Fury with STK all the way inside of CCTV. Rare currently down below him inside of the basement for logistics, but it's a actually not going to be either located. of them to get this first kill. Fantasy to go down. I believe that was a hot drone there for Exet that finds him in Harry Potter all the way downstairs in Garage. So what a find there for Exet. STK also taking a lot of damage as he tries to recoup this situation, but this actually might be the death nail if he ends up getting tagged up yet again and goes down. Other problem with Fantasy being the first to be eliminated too. Keep in mind that those my disc deploy rapidly or continue to become available for him as the round goes on. So the deeper into it you get, the more you will have available or can potentially be thrown out if some from the earlier portion of the round were already used. So the fact that he's died at about 2.30 is probably not going to leave a whole lot on the field here. Also makes it to where Xet can just take their sweet time. They've already tanked yep. up SDK. They know that, and they know that more than likely Furia is not going to be play playing Thunderbird in this setup because this happened before, so don't really have too much to worry about. So they're simply not going to sweat it. Some drones in just to confirm positions here for Xet as they continue to try and get this jacuzzi wall open, which I do believe they achieve here on the right-hand side. Also an evil eye over inside of this space to try and hold things down. I do believe an EE1D going off from Yogg there for just a split nice. second, but Rare actually with a great find to still be able to get in behind the Xset members who are seemingly unaware of Cash still being held down by the defense. Bandit in the night as well, just runs right up, picks the kill and dashes away. No chance for a refrag there for Xset. They're gonna have to find another pasture here. Is there? Oh my god. What is going on with this wall right now? <laughs> no, I, I, that's, that's Xset and these wall breaches are just not working out today. <laughs> it was over at the main balcony, over by CCTV, and now they're struggling with this one too. Very unfortunate circumstances for them at the current moment, but 
Exet still can capitalize here and win out this round. Miracle awaiting the drop here for Logistics, but he'll be discovered by Yaga, who could potentially swing into this quickly here. A Nitro Cell inside Rara's pocket, but nothing here for Miracle, as obviously he's the smoke. So potentially try and add some other things here, but no, no flares will help him out. No shotgun either as he tries to run out of the actual room. But now for Exet, it's brutality against Furia. They're taking down every member, and Yaga will clean it up. It's 7-5 fashion as Exet find their very first international win. As far as Furia is concerned, their day's not done just yet. One loss on the board, and unfortunately at the bitter end of regulation, won't even be able to get the extra point for going to OT there as well. They'll probably be a little disappointed about that, but they can't stay that way as they have another match coming up immediately after this interregional one versus Liquid. So you guys are going to definitely want to stick around for that. Absolutely. I'm so very excited for that, especially with, you know, kind of the taste we've already gotten of Furia. To see them go up against a team like Liquid, oh, it's going to be feisty. I'm so very excited. But as for this match, it just seemed like, uh, honestly, Xset could have been even more dominant inside of this, depending on how some of these strategies went. You know, we could have seen a 7-4, 7-3. That would have been pretty easy for them and really wouldn't have been questioned at all either with how that game was going. I'm curious if Exit had the same opinion of Fury that I had coming into this game, that they were a little bit more of a reserve team and weren't going to play as aggressively as we saw them do, at least inside of those first few rounds. Maybe that's what threw them off initially here. But either way, after a few bumpy rounds, they're able to get control of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go to a short break. When we do come back, we'll be breaking down this matchup and getting you ready for the next one, our final matchup of the day. Let's shake again. What in the? Oh, come on, lad. Come on, lad. with you. I'll just be a minute. Where do I leave my caber? Welcome back once again, ladies and gentlemen, to the Major. What a matchup we just had there between Furia and Exit. Exit getting redemption for their initial matchup earlier today versus CHE, where they unfortunately faltered inside of that one. Been able to correct course and take this one at the very end of regulation. So a clean regulation victory going into their pocket here. That's going to be a solid three points for them. Furia, unfortunately, will get none as they drop it right at the bitter end. Well, as of right now, because we don't know what happens inside of their next matchup, John. He's got Liquid on the docket to finish out the day here for day one of groups, Charlotte. So for them, though, going into that last match and seeing exactly what happened, I mean, initially, John, you thought that Furia was going to be pretty slow moving, pretty calculated well, in like the way that they wanted to do scene. things. Yeah, oh, like, you like, know, quite standard. Try and play around that info game and just play for your picks. That's what we expect of a lot of teams by default, but that is not what we 
got in round one. We got a very explosive Fury, in some extents, rushing directly in to take a bit of map control there, especially when it came to that upstairs clear on the initial basement hold from Xset. They paid zero respect for it, tried to clear it out. As we saw, though, players like Gomez able to hide in these corners of the map and waste massive amounts of time, in some cases, massive amounts of player bank, too, and really, round by round, just allow for Xset to negotiate control. Fury, though, able to battle back every once in a while. We still had a 4-2 half, relatively close, in my opinion, at least as far as clubhouse standards are concerned. Still a bit of a defender side of map in a lot of circumstances here, but inside of that second half, that's when Xset really came alive with these solid executions, as you're seeing now on your screen, especially this one inside of the, uh, or the, excuse me, the gym bedroom site. Yeah, and well, to be expected, that's what I thought we were going to see. Kano at the very top with Gomez yeah. rounding things off there for the double digit kills. Obviously, Fantasy and Miracle getting some of their own as well. But past that, I mean, positive across the board, all except for Spirits, who definitely got a couple very impactful kills. But I just like to highlight Yaga and what he was able to accomplish there. Yeah, he might have one of the lowest costs on the team for this, as three of them are tied for 58%. But a lot of those really, really big rounds is where Yaga stood out, like inside of Grog or what we saw inside of that last round where he just goes nuclear, able to pick up some really, really big kills and force Furia into such terrible positioning. Pay attention to the cost over on the uh, Furia side of things too, looking at it like just solid like 50 to 58%. And I can really justify this. When you look at back at that match from Furia, there's no one I can really call back to as like a constant contribution to winning rounds or making the difference, making that impact. There was always someone different and it was always kind of a hit or miss thing where they'd pick up a kill or two and then they'd fade away for a few rounds. We wouldn't really see them again. And you guys can see that as no one getting above a 60% cost in that matchup, despite having some pretty top heavy fraggers there, but Fantasy and Miracle at 11 and 10 kills each. Yeah, so able to find their mark, but not consistently. And hopefully that's something that we see potentially fixed in this next match, but that's the problem, folks. It's Well, it's about five minutes from now. <laughs> so you don't really have too much time to cool down and try and have a cool head. you got to walk into not only a difficult matchup, but a difficult matchup that happens to be somebody from your region probably knows quite a bit about your team. It should be noted, folks, we are going to give them a few minutes here in between matches. Obviously, let them cool off a mm -hmm. little bit, get themselves ready for it, as they do need time, especially after a loss, to prepare versus a matchup versus Liquid. The good news is they should know Liquid inside and out. An interregional matchup, they play against them quite often. I'd imagine they scrim against them once a week, if not more. So they should be fairly aware of what to expect when it comes to Liquid. Doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be able to win those. Liquid is one of, if not the strongest contender coming in from the Latin American region at this event. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people have been on that same boat as, you know, this is kind of Liquid's event to lose in a certain way, yeah. but, uh, you know, they've been so, so very strong for so very long, even with this iteration of the roster. Resets and ass coming in and now having land experience under them on an international stage, I think that it bodes really, really well for their chances here at Charlotte, and for Liquid to take a major with our very first crowd back in two years, oh, my little siege heart, guys, it would just <laughs> explode, I'm telling you. But luckily enough, folks, we don't have to wait too long to see our friends over on Liquid and our friends in Furia once again. We're going to send you to a quick break. We'll be back momentarily.